When did you realize you could make a living doing action films in Mexico? You know, the first film, you know, was a relatively larger film. So um, I kind of knew right away, you know, I knew that that as long as we could come in with a lower budget and provide uh, the look that people wanted, that there would be constant work there. I recognized that relatively early. Um, where I was not convinced was when I was trying to be a writer slash producer in LA and you know this this thing comes up and somebody says hey I got a project and I got some guy with money and you have these meetings and that never works out you know and but when I got to Mexico I realized uh, this is absolutely something that people need you know we can blow up a car in the street we can do chases through the streets without much problem at all and I know that you can't do that in LA. And I realized that um, as far as buyers and what it takes to um, sell a film, they want action a lot of the times. It's the easiest thing to sell for distributors. And if we can give you know, relatively high quality action films that have a nice big production value at a very, very low cost with you know, kind of lower risk, um, you know, less permits, less all that stuff, then there would pretty much always be work for us. I and mean, we've had dry spells, um, but there's always somebody calling and saying, hey, you know, I got a film, it's based in Mexico. Um, what do you think? And, they, and, you know, but we always usually say, you know, let's read the script and we'll see how we think we can work it out. But we usually try to say yes, you know. Uh, we, we're not really afraid of um, any of the, of the film challenges uh, or budgetary challenges. We try to say yes on, on, on most things unless we feel that it's not a good fit, you know, as far as, uh, uh, you know, dynamic-wise, unless we feel like these people might be problematic um, or they, you know, maybe they want too much for, you know, they don't have enough, things of that sort. But if if things work out, you know, we try to we try to do as much as we can, you know, stay working, you know, just just keep it going. Don't there's you know that's what we do, you know, and and, and a lot of people are trying to find the work, you know, they're they're every day, you know, they're they're on the phone, they're at coffee shops, they're making taking meetings, and we just kind of keep just chugging along, and so. Um, so yeah, it would it would have been kind of toward the beginning. I, I always felt like this is something that because I know enough about Hollywood to know that this is something that's absolutely needed, you know, um, to be able to make a film uh, for the a lower price and get a bigger production value. Go three sixty. Give the filmmaker, if it's not me, give the filmmaker a three sixty view at something because you you know you can't do that on Hollywood Boulevard without you know, but I can do it in Revolution Boulevard and. And TJ. Can you explain why the movie business isn't pure art? Um, no, it's not at all. I mean, and you learn that one, you learn that quick too. Um, you know, in fact, movie business uh, and certainly directing is not art. Directing is, and I don't know um, how the scholars look at it, but I consider it craft more than it is art. You're, you're putting you're putting people together and things together to create an outcome, uh, a product. Um, the the film business is, a, is truly a business because you learn this, and one of the things you learn uh, when you get your first film into the market is, especially an independent film, is all the bad news that you get about how the film's not selling like it was supposed to. Um, it wasn't, we're supposed to sell this much that they tell you on this, this sheet that you think I'm going to be rich and it didn't sell that amount. And of course it's always our fault, um, the filmmaker's fault, but you realize that, you know, uh, in order to make the films, the films have to be collateralized. Um, it's like any other product, anything is collateralized. So, and so what is the film collateralized by? It's collateralized by its unsold territories and it's it's so if they think it's worth a million dollars, they'll give you 500,000. They think it's worth five million, they'll give you two million, so forth and so on. And so when you approach that side of it, 
the more you know about that, the better. Because if you go in there blind about that, like, oh, you know what? This is going to be the next <clears throat> Tarantino movie or something. And people really don't care about that. They really care about how can I collateralize it? How can I make sure that if I put in two million, I'm going to get out this much money? What collateralizes it? And it collateralized, obviously, by the subject matter, but that's minimal these days. It's about the actor. That's how you collateralize it. So you realize it's... It's, it's a business of collateralization. And if you can collateralize, you come to them with the collateral. We can do this movie with this person for this much. They do their calculus and you can keep working. If you go and say, hey, I wrote this amazing script and uh, my friends from acting class are gonna be in it and they're the, they're the best. Pure art. Well, if you have a rich uncle, maybe. But if you take it into where the money is, because the money is in finance and banks and things like that, and they'll collateralize anything. I mean, if it's collateralized, they'll finance anything. So if you can show that, you learn in the process to show that you understand that. And it doesn't, you always don't even have to have the collateral. If they know that you know it as a filmmaker, they trust you more because you're not just out there on cloud nine trying to make some kind of wonderful piece of art that everybody can look at, but no one can figure out a way to get any kind of return on. So, so that probably doesn't happen with the first or second film, correct? No, uh, not that I know. From, I mean, my first film was going to be this big piece of art. Um, and it was written that way. I think now um, we could have commercialized it a little bit more. We had some pretty artistic themes in it. Um, but I liked art too. I, I would love to get to the point where it was art for me and I could step back a little bit from the business and just say, hey, let's just do something that's just really, really good. You know, we have this saying, like, because any, anytime you do action films, um, that are not X-Men or Fast and Furious or Die Hard, you know, they dog them. It's the, the, in the, in the, because people aren't forgiving about that. They say, look, an action scene is an action scene. They have uh, 30 days and $15 million to do it. You have before lunch and $5,000 to do it. They don't care. They just want the action scene to be right. Um, but I always say, if you ever really want to get great reviews, just take the action out. Just, just do talking in art films and, and just have people, uh, you know, talking to each other and, and make it interesting. And, and people will love it. It's the, it's the action that has to sell. And, and it's very hard to do that on low budgets. You learn that. And, and you have to take your hits in, in your, in the reviews and things like that. I don't really look at reviews, but, but you, but you realize that that's what it is. That it's, it's a not, it, people don't forgive. You know, they don't, they, it's just like a comedy. You can make any kind of comedy you want, but are you, is it funny? That's all people care about. Is it funny? It, do a film. They don't, they could do a film in a small room, a small house, but is it scary? You know? And so, um, you know, at the end of the day, um, it's art and it's a mixture of art and commerce. But, you know, my goal is to get to the more artistic stuff and step back from the business because it definitely colors the way that you film. It colors the way you shoot and it colors the way that you um, approach your filmmaking journey. I'd rather it be more art. You say that producers want more action and the director wants less? You know, that's, that's a good question. You know, I would say the producers, all, meaning the, the financiers, distributors, want more action. Sure. That's for sure. As far as the producer side, they just want to, you know, uh, bring it in on budget and get it done as, as efficiently as possible and get it out and get it, um, do their job. Distributors and, and, and sales agents want more action for sure. 
far as me as a director, for example, I would prefer to have less action unless it's super motivated, meaning it, it, it has to mean something. I don't want to, if I'm, if I'm trying to get to the door, um, if I'm trying to get out the door and there's a guy in front of me, I have to do this, 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 that to get to the door. That's the kind of action. I don't want to sit in here and fight just to fight and just break things and everything. It has to be motivated. So as long as it has a, a it motive, it has motivated within the larger story, then action is great. But action for the sake of action, unless it's done in this huge way that's so interesting to look at, like in X-Men and things like that, where it's just so interesting to sit back and just enjoy it, um, I would prefer to have less action as a director. But even, let's say, Sicario, yes. if I think back to it, there were quiet moments. There Very was quiet. stillness. Mm -hmm. And that's what made some of the action even even greater. That's correct. Sicario, Man on Fire, movies like that, um, ha it's, it's much more about the story. Um, it's much more about the characters and the relationships. And the action then is more intense when you care about the people, as you know. And so it, when the story stakes are high, when the character stakes are high, then that one punch is a lot more impactful than it would be is if you don't care about the character or if they just show up, you know, in old Hong Kong movies, people just rotate in and out, you know, uh, you know to, to beat the guy up, you know. So, so we have um, uh, a lot of different ways to skin that cat as far as uh, making sure that it's, uh, motivated, but I do absolutely, you know, want to make sure that it's motivated. And if, and if given the opportunity, I would love to make films uh, that have less action in them. But people come to Mexico, they they want to do explosions and things like that. So we, we do them as much as possible and try to make it interesting and keep it within the story. Has a distributor ever said, we can't pre-sell this territory unless there's this, this, and this type of fighting or scene? Or Absolutely. Th oh, okay. Yeah, tell me that all the time. They say um, uh, it needs to have this much action in it, and uh, page 10 needs to have this happen, page 20 needs to have that happen. Well, so we, we write them that way now. We just pack them in with action. So, And then <laughs> sometimes we don't shoot everything. We, we try, but I mean, you can only shoot what you can what you can get to, but sometimes, you know, we do the best we can, but if there's just nothing but pure action in the script, then you have to think, well, if the guy's gonna go from, from the coffee shop to the restaurant, you know, maybe he'll just have to kill, instead of the eight people that it says in the script, maybe he can kill five, you know, stuff like that. It still has the same thing, but, but, it, but you have to, you know, compromise and make sure that you can actually get it done with your resources and make it still make it good. I think the key to being a good action director is understanding your resources. You know, you you can't have no money and then want to do a big car flip. It's just not going to look right. So you say, well, instead of doing a car flip, let's make it crash into the tree. And it's really the same thing. Um, and but it, sometimes it's not to the distributors, but it, but you can get but you just don't have the money to do the car flip. So, so you have to make the, you have to make certain compromises. And as long as you can make it and give it the same energy and give it the same, um, uh, give it the same punch in the, in the, in the project, in the movie, then it usually is okay. Uh, but we do try to do as we do try to follow the script as much as possible, but you know, sometimes action can be a little gratuitous too, you know, just, especially when it's in Mexico, there's just cartels coming at you, thug one, thug two, bad guy one, big guy three, you know, all these people coming at you and it begins to look like you're shooting zombies or something. So we try to make sure, you know, when you get to set, you're looking at it and say, if the guy can get from there to there, he can take out these three guys and punch this guy and get out. It doesn't have to be 15 guys all the time. So we, we look at it and make sure that it looks right. What about for the opening? How is it something immediate? You've got to see something blow up or something happen. Well, I think, you know, that in any kind of story structure, um, which I'm not an expert, although I, I am a writer and I've written the first films that we did, um, you have to 
you know, create something that brings people in, you know. And it doesn't always have to be an explosion or an action scene. And sometimes that's nice. But it has to, you know, create a question that people want to sit around and wait to find out the answer. So um, sometimes that can be in the form of action. It's a, all of a sudden you see a guy, bam, he gets shot, he falls down. And then, he, you know, guys, and then you've got to figure out, okay, why did that guy get shot and fall down? And then that's what our story is about. It's, it's, it's telling us and informing us of what may have happened in, in that first scene. But I will tell you that in script st structure, things do have to happen within the first 10 pages, minimum 20 pages, or you will lose people. Um, we're in a, a, a you know, era and an age where people scrub three minute videos. They're like, this is too long. Uh, and you did this, they, you know, so you have to grab people's attention and keep it with it's in, but you can do that in a lot of ways with compelling story with a question with a with a with something but you know you can't just kind of just float in to the film unless you you know have some great actor that you can't take your eyes off you know that you, you know that you maybe you'll follow them for a little bit longer if you're doing a kind of a lower budget action film you have to you have to bring him in right away but there has to be some resting points it can't, it can't just be all because there, then, then, then nothing. Uh, there, you can't measure anything against. You're absolutely right. Um, I'm big on that because because the film has to breathe. You got to be able to sit back and take in what you're seeing and see where it means in the overall story. You can't just have this thing where you're where you're just constantly being bombarded with with. Um, you know, different things that are like action-based things. You have to take a minute to sit back and let the character sit back and reflect and contemplate and figure out whatever way that they're getting into, whatever they got into, they have to figure out a way out of it. I always tell an actor, it's, it's interesting, it's, it's pretty much universal. They'll go right into, they'll be told something or they'll, they'll hear a gunshot and then they'll go do something. I said, always, allow yourself to react to it like it's foreign to you bam gunshot take a second bam gunshot and they run you say no just take a minute and let it register what's happened then run let register what they just told you then respond to it because they've been reading the script and doing it on coverage 10 times so they just can react but let it let it sink in and i think you can do that with the with the storyline in total. You have to let things sink in a little bit. So it gives people time to care, gives people time to, um, and time and space and emotional space to, to, to make their decision on whether they like the character, who they want to win, uh, who they hate, you know, how much they hate them, um, and figure out, you know, go along with you and trying to figure out the story themselves and then you can kind of like you know, kind of get there together with you and the audience at the same time.